Hello again, uh, my uh, chess friends to uh, Chess Cruncher. This is a game between uh, me as Bags, uh, as plain as black, and my opponent Little John, playing as uh, white. So the uh, game, and we're gonna look at it, look at it from my uh, my how I would be sitting at the board, my side versus his. Okay, he went e4, I went c5. B3, you know, B3, I went knight C6, I'm developing, also attacking, he went, he went bishop to B2, he is now uh, ready if he wants to push his uh, E pawn, so I go D6 to uh, stop that, he goes G3, uh, getting ready to fee and channel his other bishop, I go don't think so, and I, and I go E5. Because now I can, if I want to, I could place my knight on uh, d5. I'm sorry, d4, and uh, it, it'd be a really, really, really uh, bad thing for him. Because if he takes, then I can double up in the in the center, and it'd be a really good game for me. He went bishop g2. Remember, he's fianchettoing both. But that's kind of a waste of time. But if if you feel like it's worthwhile, do it, but it weakens uh, the position on the queen side and the king side. I go F5. I go, come on, bring it on. Then I, then I go, takes, he takes, then I play knight. Knight uh, F6. The reason I'm doing knight F6 is I want him to trade, then I can bring my queen into the battle. And he does trade, so I, I now look what's ha look what happened. Yes, my queen's on the same diagonal as his uh, dar squared, but all I need to do now is play bishop to e7 and castle kingside, and then I have a, a threat of uh, checkmate on uh, f uh, f2 of his of the white side. He takes uh, bishop takes uh, c6. And I take. Plays queen uh, h5. I have dropped down. I don't mind. I have a very strong position at e uh, e4, uh, 5 uh, Then I have d uh, d6 and f6. I'm at f6. C uh, c6 and uh, c5. Uh, Everything's uh, ready to go. He takes. I take with my king. He castles queenside because he's trying to get out of there. That was a very bad move, though. If you notice, look at all my pawns. They're they're gonna storm down and crush his center. Open him up like a like a tin can. He, I go bishop e6. He goes uh, f f4. I don't trade because remember we're we're gonna we're gonna try to open him up like a tin can. E uh, e4. D4, I go, don't think so, I attack his rook. With bishop to um, G4, I go rook D2, I, I push E3, I'm attacking his rook again. Then then he takes, takes. Now I'm up a rook for a, a minor piece. Uh, I go D5, he goes H4, um, D4. I go c4, c3, he goes c3, I go rook d8, um, if he, if he trades, trades, it wouldn't really be a good, uh, thing for him, because if he, let's say he takes, and which he does, I bring my bishop to, um, uh, d6, the reason is, if he ta if he takes with the pawn, uh, now I can play bishop takes, uh, c5, and I can bring my rook over to, um, uh, e uh, e8 protecting the pawn, and that's that pawn at um, e uh, three. It will be the bone cruncher in his throat, and you'll see how important it is. So let's continue. E uh, rook e1. He goes knight. I mean, I go rook h e8. Remember protection, and I'm not worried about taking right now because that wouldn't be a good idea. He goes knight c3, trying to bring some, uh, allow his rook to take the pawn, but it uh, that was actually a very big blunder, because then he allowed me to play uh, c takes d4, and now I'm up a minor piece. 
and I was down a, mi a minor piece. I, I mean, I had a rook, uh, but he had a minor piece and a pawn, but he lost that uh, with that one bad move of the knight. He moves to uh, e4. Um, I'm going to go back. Uh, probably a better move would have been, um, now that I look at it, bishop to uh, b4 uh, attacking his rook. He would have to move it up to um, e, uh, e2. And then I can uh, bring my, uh, actually I wouldn't want to bring my bishop to uh, d, uh, d2 because then he can trade this knight and it just wouldn't be a... Actually, that probably would be a very... If you think about it, that would be a uh, really good move. Bishop, uh, b4, rook moves to uh, e2. Then I bring my bishop to uh, d2, checking the king. And if his knight takes, I can play uh, pawn takes. And his king takes, rook takes. But it would it would be a kind of equal position. I didn't want to do that, so this is what I play for total protection. Uh, c5. He goes king, uh, c2. I bring my bishop back because I don't want to lose it. It's the uh, piece that's protecting the d, uh, d5, uh, not d5, sorry, c5 uh, pawn. He moves, I move my, he moves the bishop to uh, a3, and I move my uh, rook to c8. He goes uh, g4, very bad move. I go a5, my plan is now to play a, uh, a4, and if he uh, takes the pawn, b takes a4, I'll push my uh, uh, other pawn to um, my c pawn to c4, uh, and uh, he can't play um, d takes c4. The reason is I can take with the rook, and it'd just be a huge, humongous mess. He goes g5, and he see why he does. He knows that. I go e6. Ain't gonna do it, boy. Not gonna do it. He goes uh, rook f1, thinking that he he's gonna play uh, a very interesting move. I go a4. I continue with my plan. I know he's gonna play uh, f f5. I'm not worried about that, because if he takes, um, you know, f takes. Uh, uh, G uh, G6. I could play King takes G6, and everything will be all right and ready to go. Continue the attack. He goes F5. I go A takes uh, B3. And the reason is, it's an inter uh, intermediate uh, attack. I am uh, able to take a pawn with check. I know he's going to take it back, and then now I play my rook to E5. The reason is, I have three protectors. Even when he plays that, I could take take with my king, and uh, I'm still go. Everything's great. He can't bring his rook down to any spots. He because if if he brings his rook to, I'll sh I'll show you what would happen if he brought his rook to f f4. I can push my pawn g g2. Not no, sorry e2, and he wouldn't uh, be able to stop it in time. So that that's why he has to keep his rook there. So he goes rook f6. I'm like, that's fine with me. Just uh, let me go back to a sweet spot, safe spot. He goes check. I go uh, g4. He's just allowing me to keep going up the board. A bad uh, a bad move would have been to take that pawn. It was it would have been not been a good one. You want to attack the knight and keep the pawn going. So he goes uh, e2. I go rook f uh, five. The reason is, if he trades off a uh, rook takes rook, I will be up uh, a major piece for a minor piece in an end game. I'd be it would be a superior winning position, and it would be over. Okay, so he can't trade that. He goes e f uh, six. I go come on, bring it on, and I go bang, rook f two, pinning the uh, the knight to the king. He uh, attacks, which was a mistake. E4, a check. I now for I now am attacking his knight. Um, his knight can't move, even if his king moves over. Let's say to uh, uh, D4. I mean D1. I can play rook takes, and he can't do anything about it. So everything's operation go. 
He uh, plays uh, knight a uh, rook f4. So what's what's big deal with that? I go king takes uh, e2. Now I have a discovered attack. If uh, if he doesn't take my rook, which he which he does, I can move my king anywhere, and uh, I can start the pawn push. I can even move my king to f1 and start pushing the pawn. There'd be nothing stopping the pawn. He he goes rook takes f2 check. I take with the king, not with the pawn, with the king, because if you notice, the pawn is protected by a pawn chain at uh, c5, and I want to keep it that way. He goes d d1, that king d1, that that was a blunder. He goes e2 check, and at this point he resigned, but I wanted to show you um, a continuation, like two continuations that might have happened and why he resigned. The first continuation is uh, king, uh, it starts out with, uh, king, both of them start out with king c2. I, I go queen, uh, e1 queen, he goes king to uh, b2, I go queen e, uh, queen c3 check, he goes b1, I go rook to b, uh, b8, rook b8, he goes qu uh, queen, I mean bishop, b2, I go rook takes b2, he goes g6, I go queen takes uh, b, b2. This, n this never happened, but this, this could have been um, a move sequence that he did. And now I'll show you the um, uh, other uh, move se sequence. It goes back to, um, we'll start out at e2, remember when, when he moved the pawn and he resigned right here? We're gonna now. We'll start with the, the second um, uh, combination. It starts out with, um, and then now now it goes uh, bishop to b2. This is the second uh, checkmate uh, for formulation that I actually looked at. I go king e2. Now I'm getting ready to bring my queen to um, uh, queen to uh, uh, d. D2 and pushing his king back. He goes pawn h5. I go queen d2 check. He goes king b1. I go queen d1 check. He goes king a2. I go rook um, a8. He goes um, b2. I go uh, queen c2. I mean, sorry, it wasn't. Uh, he he brought his bishop to a a3. I apologize. Then I bring my queen to c2. Check. He moves his king back to a a1. And then I play rook takes a3. Checkmate. This uh, these two combinations didn't exist because um, he resigned uh, at e, when I checked him at e2 with the pawn. But these could have been uh, some of the uh, calculations that he saw and why he resigned. Okay, with that, my opponent, uh, Little John, resigned. And um, I hope you enjoyed um, the game of how I destroyed uh, Little John. But he was an, you got to always respect your opponents. So I, I respect him as, as a player to play me. And I hope you enjoyed the two... Um, formate formulas that could have brought a checkmate about and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and um, I want to as always God bless and I'll see you next time on Chess Cruncher